Hey guys, and welcome to DQ Tarot and to your daily tarot reading for Tuesday, the 8th of October, 2019. Do make sure to subscribe and check out your October monthly readings. So um, today we have the sun still in Libra, the moon is in Aquarius, and we have Venus joining Mercury in Scorpio. So we have some more planets joining. Well, so now we have two planets in Scorpio. Mercury is in Scorpio, and it will be going retrograde in Scorpio on Halloween, the 31st of October. We'll be entering the shadow period. I'm not sure if we already have. Forgive me, I'm not an astrologer. Um, you can go check out Gregory Scott. He's my favorite astrologer um, over here on YouTube. He's great. He'll. I think he already has some information up about that. Um, so we already have Mercury in Scorpio. I think that we might be in the shadow period, and I say that because my speech has gotten messed up. It took me like 30 times to start this video, and I don't know why. Like I just couldn't get the sentence out. So forgive me for my speech today. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm just going to blame it on Mercury because it doesn't make sense. But with Venus and Scorpio, we have a lot more intense, if not sexy, kind of vibe to love and relationships. It's very intense. It's very all or nothing, as Scorpio tends to be in, in love. Um, so you'll notice a lot of intense feelings, emotions, fantasies. <laughs> Um, playing out in your relationships Ooh. and that'll be starting kind of today here on the 8th it's also a really great time to kind of clear the slate in terms of financial matters I don't know why um, Scorpio well Scorpio is actually in its detriment in Venus because it is exalted in Taurus they're opposite signs as you know Taurus is ruled by Venus it will be in its detriment in Scorpio which makes things a little bit harder, a little bit more intense, not a little bit, a lot more intense, a lot more difficult in terms of communicating and making big decisions in love. So again, it's not surprising to me that Scorpio in, or Venus and Scorpio here is kind of good for financial matters and that Scorpio way of being able to clear the slate, start things over, give back what you owe and get yourself back on track. So... I will say the first card that came out here is the Seven of Swords for today. And we're using the Hobbit deck. We'll see what else pops out here. For today. Okay. So let's get you started. As always, they fall on the floor. The Ace of Wands reversed. Hmm. Page of Swords. It definitely feels like it's, I don't know, it doesn't feel like the worst day, but it feels like, I don't know, Monday was kind of a weird feeling, intense day. Kind of brought up a lot of intense feelings, um, harsh reality checks. I don't know if you've seen the dailies for yesterday on Instagram or here on YouTube, but I know that they were pretty intense. So let's continue to see what comes up today, though. I knew this card was coming up. Two of coins. It's been a really weird energy, I think, to Libra season in that it's neither here nor there. And I think it's because we're in the process of trying to balance out and throwing all these planets in Scorpio is really making it more of an intense and awakened experience here. Okay. I think for love, it'll be a pretty nice day, though. Let's get some clarifiers and talk about what we got here. So Seven of Swords, Ace of Wands reversed. And whenever I see the Seven of Swords upright, I always kind of get a feeling... There's something, well, not I get a feeling, the message is that we, there's something here that we don't really know or something that is hidden. And with that Ace of Wands reversed, to me, it feels like there's something that we don't really get that blocks us. And we're not understanding, like, why we're blocked in some way that we're trying to move forward. It's like every time, like, I throw something at this wall, it just bounces back and hits me in the head. And I'm trying to break through the wall. So <laughs> let's see. Seven of Swords, Ace of Wands, Reverse. We're going to use... You know what? We're actually going to use the Hermetic Tarot to clarify. That's the energy we need today. Nice, sharp, 
the message. I have one particular guide that is very connected to this deck and he pulls no punches. He's very <laughs> sassy. He's very harsh. It's the harsh reality check. So let's see, Seven of Swords, Ace of Wands, Reverse. What do you have to say about that? Interesting that the Ten of Cups comes up. That's very unexpected. And Seven of Swords, Ace of Wands, Reverse. Anything else you want to tell us about this situation? The Empress and Ten of Cups. Do you really love or do you really believe in your heart of hearts that you can get what you want here? Because I think, let me get the Ten of Pentacles reversed, and I wasn't going to take it, but it's on the bottom of the deck and it was screaming my name. So, what clarifies that Seven of Swords reversed, Ace of Wands reversed, that inability to know what holds our energy back, what holds us back, what is this block? What's our roadblock here? Um, I think today we need to work on how we feel in terms of completing this goal that we feel so blocked in. Because Ten of Cups and the Empress say that you need to really love yourself, love this situation, believe in your heart here almost, that you can get this success. Because the Ten of Cups is, you know, Lord of Perfected Success. You have to believe that you have it in you to get there. The Empress is the energy of manifestation. She's kind of a nice business energy. When she shows up, you know... I don't know why. See, I'm saying everything backwards. Um, she's kind of a nice, you know, self-made business person energy or, you know, the energy of almost like an entrepreneur, somebody that can really do what it takes in terms of making a business work. So again, you don't have to be owning your own business, but this person is able to manifest the changes in terms of their wealth, in terms of, you know, pentacle energy here to what they want. She is the mother type of energy, whatever, you know, she can give birth to whatever she needs. That's why she doesn't ever look worried. She's always relaxing because her energy, you know, she works smarter, not harder. And I think that's what we need to believe about the situation because it feels like, an, an, you know, like we're trying to get there, working smarter, not harder. But we have to believe that we can do so. With the Ten of Pentacles reversed, I don't think we've seen the financial... <laughs> The financial success that we've wanted from this and that might be why we might be feeling that this is a huge loss right now and that we're just constantly you know draining money that things aren't working out and that might be where we're getting tripped up because we're not seeing that success so page of swords two of coins for me that's looking for ways to change the situation literally page of swords can be a spying energy but he's also an energy of learning of asking of getting someone's advice or having somebody come in and tell you something that you might need to juggle with a little bit here. So let's see what that's about. Yeah, we have another page. Okay, can we please get one card? And it is one card, but it was flying around as it should be because it's the Eight of Wands. It's about movement, communication. If we're willing to juggle in some area here, willing to change things up, listen to somebody else's opinion, we might even have a couple different opinions coming in. Um, both of them, or at least one of them, and I think you're going to know which one is the one to go with here, one to listen to, but there is a swift change because Two of Coins for me is kind of a juggling in the midst of change here trying to decide what to go with what needs to be left behind what we can continue with because practices need to be changed in some area of our life here for me this is really coming up as more of a work situation more of a business situation it could be love as well and we could need to really come to terms with how we feel about somebody or how we don't feel about somebody in a big way and just do what's best for us and communicate what we need to apologies saying i'm not into this or it feels like we need to communicate especially if we've been sitting on the fence not sure about something there there's probably needs to be a choice if this is a love situation but again this really strikes me as more of a work financial trying to break through some type of barrier here that we can't seem to figure out whether it's you know getting the fame, getting the job, getting the callback that we've wanted, getting the money, the raise really for a lot of you and not understanding why it hasn't come yet. 
so. And then we get that Six of Cups at the end, which to me is a really nice energy. We get the Nine of Cups. Trust that things are coming back in. There's a really beautiful energy underneath all this picky, nitpicky, nasty, frustrated energy that's coming. It kind of feels like it's rolling off you here because you're frustrated. And it's frustrating, whatever this is. It's been really frustrating and you haven't known the answer. And I think though with the Nine of Cups, Six of Cups, Lord of Material Happiness, it's Gollum getting back. It's, I mean, he kind of has his own material and emotional happiness as he gets back with, you know, the ring here. Looking at it, oh my precious. <laughs> it's such a beautiful Six of Cups because we all know how truly, how much love and how obsessed Gollum is with the ring. So you can imagine what that must feel like to finally have, to finally hold what you have wanted. To get somewhere we've been trying to get to. Let's see what we need to know about that because that feels interesting like how this is happening here something oh my god we get another nine of cups this is a really beautiful you know i wasn't sure where this was going and i think a lot of you guys feel that way starting the day off here you're not really sure where this energy is going to take you where it kind of feels like you're almost at the point where you just want to give up trying to figure out what's going on give up on the answers give up on trying to fight for whatever it is you've been desperately or you know for probably a really long time trying to manifest, trying to build in your life here. But there is a sense with the Nine of Cups of believing in yourself, of keeping your dreams intact and keeping them on that shelf to reach for continuously. Because when I get the Nine of Cups twice, the Six of Cups, I do feel that something that feels this way is being offered to us, or you know, that we're swiftly coming into it. But we have to be willing to switch things up, to change things to adopt a more loving energy to ourselves in this situation towards what we're going, towards whatever we're trying to, whatever goal we're trying to reach. Because if we don't believe in it, if we don't love it, if we don't believe that, if we don't really in our heart of hearts believe that it's coming to us, then it won't. But I think some of you guys are having a wake-up call in that respect and saying, having somebody or somebody, somebody tells you something that helps with the situation and then you believe it. Or somebody, you know, gives you that pep talk that's really needed for you to get back to... I can make my dreams come true and here they are. I want to see if there's a solid energy with that because I know some of you guys are like, is something coming in? Because that seems really nice. Nine of Cups is one of my favorite, favorite cards to get in the deck. It's like, things are great, awesome. This is much better than I expected kind of energy. You know, wow, made it. I knew I could this whole time. So let's see. Bringing something in on a material, serious level here. It's interesting. Can I get a card, please? Eight of coins. There's work, some work involved here, or it has to do with work. Um, and I think, because I really like this eight of coins, because he's kind of watching them all cross here. He just woke up, and he's like, oh my god, that's how they're crossing. Okay, I see. And now I'm going to have to go back around here and do this so I can get back on track. It's realizing here what needs to be done in doing it to get to where we want and believing that whatever we're going to do, whatever efforts we're now going to put in, two eights here, there's work put to be put in. There is also a swift change once we decide to do so, once we decide to take notice to change things up to say, oh, well, maybe this will work better. Maybe I can try it a different way. So take new approaches today. It will lead you to this wonderful Nine of Cups feeling about an Eight of Coins situation. Although I will say, you know, don't, you know, keep your eyes open. Understand that changes need to be made here, but that it's, you know, this is right here. We're coming right back into this. It's like a small change. We're just in the midst, and we get two pages. I mean, it's small change that really reaps the rewards, right? Two nine of cups. I mean, dang. All right, guys, let's pull some. Oh my gosh. Hold on one second. I'm going to have to go get these cards here. I literally flung like a bunch of these Doreen Virtue cards just now. As I knock the whole table too. Gosh. Okay. Retreat. It's time to disconnect from the world. 
terms of relationship, you might want to disconnect with this person or you might need some time off yourself in order to come back into this. This might be a kind of you-centric day. Getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. And sometimes to reveal our innermost selves, we have to take some time out to learn what, what it is we need to communicate from there. So let's see. Now about a Stacey DeMarco card from the Halloween Oracle. Let's see what we get. Message of advice and guidance. What do we need to know about today? Oh my god, we get two cards. Ugh, why, is, why are we getting so much today? Okay, the lamp and the owl. So the lamp for me, I love this. This is such a nice energy. I get this. Okay, these cards really just, they get it all the time. They always just come in the perfect message. <laughs> they just wrap it up. I see I can't speak. Maybe it is shadow retrograde, whatever it's called. <laughs> All right, the lamp remembrance. When I see this card, I see it, you know, despite its other meanings that she's given it, as a need to follow that light within us. So we need to follow wherever, whatever goal that we're headed towards and trust the journey. Things might not be very clear right now. It might seem very misty, but we got to keep following that light. It will guide us to wherever we're going. It will guide us to whatever it is we're trying to do. And again, always remember that you're not going to always get what you want, but you will always get what you need as long as you follow this. So this card reminds us that it is a positive thing to remember those who have passed by celebrating their life rather than mourning their death. For those with whom we did not have an easy relationship or even those we did not like, leave us with valuable lessons. Sometimes we learn more from our nemesis than we do from our friends and, this, and so the darkness can illuminate our strengths and our true values so that we can live them more clearly and fully. And I think that's what we need to do today. We need to allow ourselves to live our strengths and true values. We need to live them clearly to fully and not hide away. And sometimes that involves a change, a shift. So let's look at Owl. Wise seeing, wise action. I love this card. Okay. Hmm. Many deities were said to be were said to be able to change into owls, and perhaps the most famous was the Greek goddess Athena, who was famous for her strategy and intelligence. To this very day, the capital city of Greece, Athens, has Athena's owl as its symbol. Should the hooting owl come looking for you this Halloween, it indicates the need for wise counsel or further information before you make a decision. Considered action is warranted. Think before you act emotionally and ensure you think strategically, not impulsively. I really like these messages today. All right, let me know how it resonates below, guys. Check out your monthly readings. Make sure to like and subscribe and have a wonderful day. If you want to book a private reading, all that information is right below this video in the description box. Uh, namaste.